Within the world of Digimon, there is so many different types of cards. Even, even different colours. I think there's seven colours at this point. In fact, I'm sure there's seven colours at this point. And with that, it's just so difficult to know what you need in a deck and what is a top priority, especially when it comes to staples in cards and stuff. So, today we're going to be looking at red cards, but here are my personal top five favourite cards in a red deck that are always considered. Not necessarily in all decks, especially when it comes to Jessmon or Agumon or Agabond or shenanigans like that. It doesn't really matter. But these are just the top five cards that I personally think should always be considered when you're building a red deck. Now then, number five, I believe, let's kick it off with a digi egg. Now, there are many, many different red digi eggs, as expected because we've had so many different sets over the last year and a bit. There's going to be a lot of different digi eggs you're going to want. So, my favorite and my personal staple one across all red decks is Gurimon. Now, Gurimon, he's literally just a nice red card that works with any other decks where if you're over 6000 DP you get to draw one. Nothing special, nothing major, but he's beautiful in the fact that he's giving you hand power when you don't necessarily have it, and more often than not a lot of red Digimon are actually over 6000 just by the time they're level 4. Now you're not going to be getting this straight off of level 3 or your rookies, that's, that's basically a no-go at this point, but building yourself up to that champion stage to the mega stage you're gonna be able to draw one no matter when you're attacking it is a one attacking so you do need to swing you're not just gonna be getting it off of playing other cards but again beautiful hand power in this game you need hand power to be able to do more action why not give you why not get a card that'll give you that draw but at number four we have a card that is part of a line of option cards that are useful in any deck really you're going to see them quite often, they're going to be really useful, they're going to be a beautiful utility to have, and that is, in this case, the red memory boost. Now, the memory boosts, they do take a turn to be able to get that memory, but that's fine because it also gives you a draw, a, a draw when you think about it. It gives you the ability to add a card into your hand that you might need. You're searching the top four, you're taking one of those red Digimon that you need. Now, it does have to be a red Digimon, so you can't use it to search for Tamers, you can't use it to search for options, but searching for that Digimon, the one that you might need if you're stuck at a rookie stage, if you go to a level four, or you're looking for that level six piece, or even level seven, in the case of Jessmon or Ragnarodmon, it's so useful to be able to pull that card that you need to search for that piece that you require. And even then, after a turn of being on the field, you can trash it to gain two memory as well. Going from a rookie to a level four uses up that two memory, so you're basically getting a Digivolution for free. However, going from a four to a five or a five to a six, that's usually three or four memory that you need to use, and that's the red memory boost basically uses it. Even so, it only costs three to use. Uh, it costs three to play originally. So, using that two memory, if you have another one in hand, you can just use another one for one. Again, searching tool, you're able to replenish that memory a little bit later on in the game, or you can just save it for a good time. It doesn't have to be used the turn straight after. Nothing is stopping you from keeping it until you need it. Obviously, unless your opponent has something that means that you can't gain memory unless it's a tamer, but that's a specific use case. This is just a generic use case where we're looking at red staples. Now, number three, we're looking at more draw power because for some reason, red can just get a lot of draw power. It's almost like we're playing a blue deck at this point. So we're looking at draw power here. However, it's also a rookie killer. Honestly, Fireball, one of the best single target 3K killers because if it doesn't delete anything, you're able to draw two. Early doors, it's a two drop option card. Uh, and just in the early doors, you're dropping that. If there's nothing on the board, you still draw two. You're getting draw power. Pair that with the Gurimon at the beginning, number five. In a turn, you're potentially getting three draw power for nothing, for just attacking once and dropping two memory, which is fine. You don't need to be able to spend a lot of memory in order to get draw power. And that's one thing that other decks like black and sometimes purple, not so much anymore because of the uh, Bagger army and stuff, but black especially struggles with draw power. And that's coming from a black player, by the way. It's, it's atrocious to be able to not have any power in your hand, but it's a nice utility, especially even hit in security, you're able to draw two as well. If it's hit in security, then you just use its main effect, which is delete something 3k or more, or less, sorry, and draw two if nothing's deleted. 
Okay, we're going down to the final few. And here we go. We have the tamer, the memory tamer, that is, Hero himself. Hero is just a very generic red memory tamer. We all know what memory tamers do. If you're less than three memory at the start of your turn, go up to three. And then when you swing with a level five or higher, any red Digimon, you can suspend Hero to gain 2000 DP. However, this is broken if it's a Gammon. You can you you can tap him, suspend him whenever if it's a Gammon on the field instead, which is a beautiful technique because you're pushing decks like Dragon Links who struggle to get over 12,000, 13,000 up to potentially 16,000 in its turn just by suspending your one tamer because it's a level 5 or higher Digimon. Now, he is your four cost tamer. That's just because he's a memory tamer. Pretty much all memory tamers from older sets are going to be slightly more expensive, like Kota for the Alphamon. If you're looking for an even stronger tamer, I can suggest Tai Kamiya from one of the really old sets. I believe it's the BT1 Tai. There'll be something on screen to correct me and just to show you the tamer that I'm talking about. But it works beautifully in decks like Jessmon or Black War Greymon where you're going to a very high stack. His effect allows you to gain security, plus, security attack plus one if you have five or more cards in your Digivolution sources. That's amazing! If you're swinging with a card like Garmon or Black War Greymon or even Jessmon who has multiple security attacks already you're potentially going to be able to OTK or even bring them down too close to lethal. Which you're going to want to do because that's obviously the aim of the game. Now just before we get into the number one most useful card that I believe is in the red selection of cards, let's just run through an honourable mention that I thought. Now, back in BT8, BT9, around that time, we saw a huge increase in Metal Gururumon. Now, again, it's to this day, it's still meta. The beginning of 2023, Metal Gururumon is still meta, it's still topping. There was one huge card you could use to get around being bounced out by Metal Gururumon all the time, and that is a Delicate Plan. Now, a Delicate Plan is literally just a one cost. Now, this one cost option means that your selected Digimon that you choose cannot activate security effects for the turn. That's massive when it comes to things like Metal Storm, where if you're hitting Metal Storm into then, the Delicate Plan won't let that activate and therefore you will not get bounced. It's huge. It's... It's... It's weird because it stops all security effects from going off. That means a Tamer doesn't come down. That means options don't go off. That means Digimon that have security effects do not activate. It's a very, very nice card that is a one drop and it just stops all cards from being activated. My personal number one card that you're gonna to want to run in a red deck is Crimson Blaze, this card right here. Now, Crimson Blaze, very, very strong because it reduces its play cost based on how many Digimon your opponent has on the field. If you're playing against a hybrid deck, they're probably going to have more, so therefore this is going to be a far less cost than 6, which it currently just is at base. Now, Crimson Blades, it deletes all of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 or less DP. 6,000, again, like we discussed with the Gurimon, you're going to be seeing at level 4 stages. Pro probably not level 5s, but there are some that do have 6,000 or less, and you're just, you're board clearing. You're board wiping for six, even down to zero cost if your opponent has six Digimon on the field, which is quite insane if they do. Now, along with that, not only does it board wipe, your opponent then can't play Digimon by effect. This shuts down things like Minerva Loop, because you're not able to play cards out by effect. This shuts down things like Jessmon, because they're not able to play their system on by effect. It's an amazingly strong card that shuts down the entire board. Again, unfortunately I don't own this card, but an alternative could be Gaia Force. Gaia Force is a strong one hit kill card. You target one stack, it's basically gone. Unless it says otherwise, like with Alphamon, can't be deleted by card effect. Unless that says, Gaia Force is gonna just destroy that stack. Even hit into security, both of these cards, their main effect activate. So you're able to one hit kill a big stack. You're able to board wipe, depending which one you're running, obviously. But they're very, very strong, and it doesn't look like they're gonna go away anytime soon. Because practically every deck runs at least one of these two cards. 
So these were my top five red cards that I would have in any deck. Be it the hero for the memory tamer, just because he's nice and generic across all red types. Crimson Blaze, I believe is a must have at this point because you're shutting down an entire board. Even throwing in a delicate plan as the honorable mention, you're gonna be seeing a lot of these cards across the game and in the current meta, I believe. So I'd try and line up where you can. If you're playing against a red, just bear in mind that they might have them in the deck. These aren't the top cards ever. These are just my opinions that I believe are the strongest cards for a red deck. So, thank you everybody so much for watching. If you like this format of video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. This is my this is a first attempt at doing this sort of thing. If you've got any other tips, if you want to discuss any of the cards, if you've got any other suggestions, let me know down below. As well as let me know what colour you want to see next, and I'll get it done for you. As of right now, thank you very much. Peace.